So I'm by myself tonight. Micah couldn't get a babysitter and uh, Chris had family come by and I didn't get Chris's text until basically I was in front of his house. I went um, off-roading this morning, morning at Hidden Falls Adventure Park so I was out of signal and I guess there was two M MMS coming through and it didn't download and I was in front of his house checking text because nobody was outside and then I see how he, he can't actually come out. So, uh, I'm by myself tonight. I got the four-wheeler all loaded up with both backpacks on your one is on my back obviously but uh, um, the wheat field has been cut last week so wheat is gone. Um, it's super humid and hot. I mean today was just uh, I don't know upper upper 80s and the humidity is uh, killing me right now. Uh, sweaty, I have gnats and all kinds of flies all over me. It's disgusting. Hopefully the four-wheeler holds up. That's the Polaris uh, Sportsman 570. Uh, it's a 2015 uh, where he had to change the stupid fuel pump once. I went with the aftermarket fuel pump because it was way cheaper than the original one. Uh, and I don't know if that was a good idea because it actually died on me just having it in idle earlier. Not very happy with the Polaris right now. And I was eyeing a Can Am Defender. Anyways, because I have three kids, three boys, my wife, and there we go on doing Micah, Chris. I mean, I think I have a need for a like a four or six seater, really. Um, so Defender Max would be nice. Maybe I'll just trade in that, that Polaris because it's giving me so much trouble. Anyways, let's get going, kill some hawks. See you in a little bit. So as I loaded up, got in the four-wheeler and started it, stupid thing keeps dying on me. The last thing I need is for that four-wheeler to die in the field. Then I got the four-wheeler stuck and can't get it really out tonight. So pretty pissed to so unload this thing again put stuff in my backpack and then I guess I'll be walking after all but at this point I just want to trade this dude in and get a defender but then again ATV is pretty handy because it's just narrower than a, a side by side I can load it up in the hog wagon with the defender I probably need a different trailer and everything so I'm torn but I'm just pissed that that thing died again because that f fuel pump I replaced maybe, I don't know, six months ago, maybe a little more, I don't know. Super annoying, right? I guess we'll be walking. This lone boar came in pretty early. Um, I literally just walked up uh, along this field. I still have some daylight left, so I, I was able to see that shadow come in. Um, but there's also a sounder to the left, uh, far end of the field, maybe six, seven hundred yards out. So I didn't want to take a shot and, and scare off that sounder uh, passing this boar. Uh, something to, to notice here though is how quick that boar really dis disappears in the field. Um, that's a Milo field here to the right. Uh, I'm going to walk up here to the corner and then uh, look down the rows. You can see uh, any hawk in here whatsoever, so um, they disappear fast. It could have been within 30 yards, he could have been further. Uh, it's really hard to tell. I couldn't even hear him anymore in there, so uh, challenging.
This hawk just snuck up behind me at 50 yards. The first two shots were center mass hits, uh, yet the hawk just runs off. And it's to show you that a 6-8 SPC at center mass is not going to stop a hawk. You will still have to aim for the neck area, which I should have done in this case, but uh, I just didn't think on my feet. I watched this video here a few times now in slow motion and uh, when shooting for these uh, smaller ones my uh, radical was actually on target uh, most of the times so I'm going to have to check uh, my zero here make sure that I'm actually on target um, I hit only one of these smaller ones um, just by looking at the video I think I should have hit at least uh, two or three but instead the only one I hit is actually this shot right here. So back to the range. Well, that was a rather frustrating night. It started really with uh, my guy and Chris not being available, so I was by myself, which I realized late. Um, Four-wheeler didn't work. I guess the fuel pump again. The wheat field is cut, as you guys can see. Problem is it's super dry. So once you walk through, it's noisy. Um, I had quite a few hawks out here, maybe 25 or something, I think I counted. And uh, the wind was, the wind direction was good, but it was like three miles per hour wind or something. And I'm pretty sure it either swirled or uh, at some point there was no wind and then I think they winded me and it took off. Then I had one boar, uh, he was staying around and somewhat close, maybe maybe 100 yards, took a shot. Um, pretty sure I hit him, but he took off. So that wasn't a very well-placed shot. So that was not good. And then that speaks to the 6.8 SPC and uh, I guess its uh, effectiveness on hogs. Still something to figure out. A well-placed shot obviously brings brings him down. You can shoot a 5.56, you can shoot three on blackout. If you shoot behind the ear, they go down, right? Um, but I would hope that with the 6.8 SPC, if you do a center mass shot or shoulder area, that, you know, it does have a little bit of a better effect. Anyways, that board takes off. I keep scanning and all of a sudden, I think I see some hogs further in the tree line and then I hear something behind me. Again, this feet is pretty noisy. So I hear something walk up behind me and at this moment I'm not sure like, is it a skunk? Is it something else I need to worry about? Coyote maybe? So I turn around and there's a hawk, maybe at 60 yards or something. I wasn't very far and he kept walking so he didn't bend me or anything and and I take a shot and I think I rushed it. So that was, it was a center mass shot. I should have gone for behind the ear, but I didn't. So center mass shot and he starts running. I take another shot and I hit him again. I think further in the back. Um, he crosses fence line, disappears. Maybe an hour later now, hour and a half later, I see the same hawk, I think, uh, come in again all the way to the end of the field. Um, too far off a uh, stretch for me to, to shoot back there. And uh, with the trees, I just don't want to take any, any risks. 
Um, but you can tell like the way he, he walks, that must have been that hawk because he was uh, probably not feeling so hot. So um, I'm sure there's those two hawks go down. Um, somewhat later I have this sow come in with a bunch of smaller ones. Um, she isn't the, the biggest sow, but she was that biggest hawk in that group. Um, and take a shot at her and there was a, what appears, um, a shoulder shot. So you guys can see it down there. Um, I'm guessing if I would open her up, I wonder if it's pretty close to um, her heart or even is the heart. But she dropped in the spot, which was good. Um, tried to take a shot at one of the, the smaller ones and I think I hit one, but he also took off. So all in all, just not a very good night tonight. Um, it's just one issue after another. Bad luck with the Polaris. Uh, Rushing my shot, it's super hot and humid. Uh, mosquitoes are bad. It's just not a good good night, and uh, that's just what it is. So I'm glad I, you know, got her on the ground at least. Um, I got two more hogs, actually three more hogs with a smaller one, um, which are not gonna be coming back probably. So four hogs is not bad, even though I only was able to recover this one. This is highly frustrating tonight, and uh, mostly because of the ATV. And then I had my camera with me, and uh, my big camera, and there's no SD card in it. So I'm going to call it a night. Uh, thanks for watching again, and I'll see you next time.